So welcome back and today I'm going to be sharing with you my favorite apps and tools that are on my MacBook. This is pretty much a requested follow up to the what's on my iPhone video, but a computer is probably twice as important for me. Having an early interest in tinkering with computers really early on in my life is pretty much how I got into this field of software engineering. So I firmly believe that having the right settings, apps and tools on your computer will really impact your daily workflow. These are X number of apps that I've curated and that I use to manage my professional work, content creation, site projects, and so much more really. Also, I'll quickly go over some of my custom system settings as well. These things that I'll share cover a wide range of functionality that I'm sure anyone can get value out of. So let's just go straight into it. So really quick, my computer is the 16 inch MacBook Pro M1 Pro which I got in silver because I felt like it looked a little bit more classic. And it's a little bit heavy, but the screen real estate and the display is just so awesome. Also, you get the extra IO in the card slot, which is pretty handy. So let's look at some of my system settings and some of the very first things that I turn on when I get a new computer. So these are pretty quick since for the most part, I don't mind some of the default system settings. The first thing is in the display, which I change the scaling from the normal default to more space. This allows you to have more content and basically to have more screen real estate. Similarly with the dock, I make the dock much smaller in size, but increase the hover magnification. So it's still easy to click through the icons. Also, I like to increase my mouse tracking speed just a little bit more from the normal. And I make sure to enable hot corners. I have one to start the screensaver and lock the screen, the bottom left to start a quick note, and the bottom right to open up mission control. And for the finder app, I like to toggle on show path bar and show status bar, so I get just a little bit more info when I'm browsing my files. And one of my last changes is over in Safari, which I'm using all the time, I change the tab layout from separate to compact, so it gives you a little bit more vertical space. I'm not sure why that's not the default. Now first, I wanna jump into the productivity app section. And sure, there's tons of productivity apps out there, but these are some of my selection, which I pretty much rely on on a daily basis now. So the first app on my productivity list is great because it actually helps me save time and energy with using other apps. And it's super essential because sometimes I do struggle when I'm trying to share a process or one of my workflows with a friend or team member. I want to share with you an awesome solution called Scribe. If you're like me here and constantly getting last minute questions on how to do things, this app will save you so much time. I'm the go-to person for all things tech and I used to waste so much time with back and forth communications, screenshots, and repetitive explanations until I found out about Scribe, which uses AI to automatically generate step-by-step -step guides. Start by installing the Chrome extension, hit record, then go through my normal process. Here, for instance, I'm creating an invoice for a customer. And once I'm done, I'll stop recording, review the automatically generated guide, which rarely fails me, make any changes if I need to, then you can quickly share it however you want to. It's that simple. So that's one of the many uses that you can get out of Scribe. If you're interested, feel free to go check them out using my link down in the description. And of course, thanks to the Scribe team for making this video possible. So next for productivity, I have Raycast, which is really a must have for me. It's how I get around my Mac and launch apps or find directories. Raycast is pretty much like the spotlight search that's already built in, but it takes it to the next level. Also, it's very customizable and you can record hotkeys to set shortcuts for some commands. It also has built in window management. This is the one I have to make the window smaller, to make the window bigger and to center the window and the possibilities are endless once you get into the Raycast extension store. And lastly, Raycast has a built-in AI chat for the pro members, which gives you all the features of ChatGPT without having to open up a separate window. So next up is Notion, which I feel like I'm constantly mentioning on the channel, but it's for a very good reason. Notion has transformed the traditional note-taking app with its databases and customization features Notion has basically been like my second brain as of lately. It's where I store tons of meeting notes and I track a bunch of projects and tasks. Also, Notion AI has some pretty cool stuff in the works, which I can definitely see myself using more. 
and so for browsers i mostly use safari chrome and arc safari i use it for all of my main normal browsing and chrome for development with this comprehensive set of dev tools oh and most recently i've been using the arc browser as well which is the new player around it just has a neat interface and I like to use it for screen recording for that same reason. Also, it has a couple other neat features like built-in drawing and a built-in notepad. And so last up on my productivity, I have Copilot. It's an all-encompassing personal finance application, which I probably shown before already, but the desktop app is so well designed that that alone makes it worth it for me. I love how easy they make it to search and to refer back to historical transactions. But Copilot has so much more like budgeting, setting up recurring expenses, and of course your account and investment management stuff. Oh, and let me not forget about music because music for sure is a productivity booster. My go-to music streaming service is Apple Music. What is yours? So let's hop into coding and development. As a programmer, I've tried various different IDEs, editors, and development tools on my computer. However, I've found that I'm able to accomplish a great deal with just a few actually. Of course, this section might be a little bit more subjective and opinionated based on the branch of development work that you do. Nevertheless, here are the apps that have greatly assisted me on my coding journey. Okay, so next up and getting a little bit more technical here is the warp terminal. Warp replaces the default terminal app on the MacBook and adds a bunch of other useful features straight out of the box, like auto suggestions and completions. So here we can see our virtual environment is activated and we're currently in the master branch of this code repository. And also of course, Warp had to add AI, which is surprisingly really handy in case you forget some commands or how to create some scripts, how to copy a file to a new file. And here it gives you the solution and you can just copy it or add it straight into the terminal. So yeah, the warp terminal just really takes the default terminal to the next level. But I really like the overall design of warp. Every command that you run is separated into its own block, which makes it easier to digest and navigate your terminal. Also, the commands have sticky headers, which is useful when your logs get very long. So next up in developer tools is Visual Studio Code. And surprisingly, you don't need that many apps to get into software development. A text editor or IDE is really the core thing in software development. I use Visual Studio Code because it's perfect for me since I mostly do web development. I prefer Visual Studio Code because of how extensive the extensions community is. And also Visual Studio Code is really customizable. But how I mentioned, your editor of choice really depends on the type of work that you do. For instance, if you're more interested in working with iOS apps and MacBook apps, you may have to refer to Xcode. Here you can see you get a slightly different interface designed to help you develop and test mobile applications for Apple devices. Next up, really quick, I have Postman, which is an essential tool for developers if you're using a lot of APIs. APIs are just a way to communicate with websites and to retrieve data. Here, for instance, I have an endpoint called YouTube, which I can use to retrieve my subscriber count. Whether you're a seasoned developer or just starting out, Postman is a must-try tool that enhances your ability to test, interact, and communicate with APIs effectively. And lastly, which I won't be diving into, is just a VPN that I use. Next up, I have some communication and collaboration apps. As someone who works at a large company with a big team, effective communication is a pretty important piece of what I do. Effective communication ensures that all of our projects run smoothly and that everyone's on the same page. So first up is Grammarly for desktop, which you may already be familiar with. Grammarly has been essential for me to communicate appropriately and saves me from some embarrassing moments. So yeah, it's just a solid grammar checker, which you can rely on. And next up is Superhuman, which is my go-to mail client. It's just so fast to work with. I really like the clean UI and you get a bunch of useful commands and shortcuts. Though I really like the interface of the default mail app, Using Superhuman's inbox zero method to check off all your mail makes managing your mailbox less of a burden. And also it's a good way to make sure you're not missing anything important. But hands down, my favorite thing are the AI features of Superhuman. You get AI composing, AI replying, and summarization of emails. Also, you can save custom snippets in case you find yourself repeating things. And you can set reminders or schedule your emails for the perfect time. Then, for the other communication tools, I just have Microsoft Teams, which is pretty much how you would expect. Gets the job done for communicating with my team, 
Zoom, of course, is an essential. Kind of crazy how many meetings just stayed online, which I'm not complaining about. Then I have Discord, which I don't use too often, but it's cool to be able to join community specific chats. And now I want to cover some of the Apple essentials, which are some of the apps that are already built in, which you can leverage to really help your productivity. Starting off with Apple calendars, which is just straightforward and simple. So I don't need a separate app for my calendar. Here I can easily add all of my accounts, no problem. Then I have reminders where in Notion, I like to track my projects and checklists more in depth. And the reminders app is more for quick single to-dos, but I do separate my to-dos between personal work and YouTube stuff. And similarly over in the notes app, it's not as organized as I would like, honestly. Here I just jot down things that I need quick access to. Then we have creative tools. When it comes to creative tasks, I found myself experimenting with various different tools from different suites. But over time, I've discovered a handful of essential apps. Let me walk you through some of these, such as my video editing process and some of my design work. So starting off with Final Cut Pro, which is my go-to editing app for all of my videos. I used Premiere Pro in the past, but Final Cut has been such a breeze to use since I switched over to the Mac. It pretty much has all you need to create awesome content. So one of my main challenges is shooting at multiple locations and trying to keep a consistent look. Believe it or not, that takes a majority of my editing time sometimes. But one thing that really helps me out is just using custom LUTs. Here's a LUT pack that I use often by Danny Gewurz and this free one that you can get from Lutify.com. And for the most part, I'm pretty satisfied with Final Cut Pro, but I really wish Apple would start exploring more AI and automation tools. For instance, on Final Cut, I like to add my own custom captions, but doing this manually always takes up more time than it should be. And besides Final Cut, I did download DaVinci Resolve because I hear that's what a lot of professionals use. But gosh, DaVinci actually seems a little bit more complicated and so feature packed. So it's probably going to take me a little while to get the hang of it. But I do want to start learning how to color grade better on here. One thing that's really new to me is that they use a kind of node system instead of a layer system for their coloring, but it's pretty interesting and I definitely want to check it out more. And so for design work, I use Figma, which I started using Figma to create designs for websites and apps, also for creating full out design systems, but slowly Figma kind of turned into a general design tool for me. I use it a lot for just brainstorming and organizing some of my scattered thoughts for example, on thumbnails or video title screens. But I also really like the community aspect of Figma. So you can check out a lot of people's really cool designs and plugins. And most of them are for free. But the way I use Figma around 90% of the time is by using these predefined design libraries and design systems from other companies and using them to create mockups for your own apps and websites. For example, here you can use their components so you can see this design has so many different components like alerts, buttons, menus, keyboard layouts, and you can just go so in depth on Figma. So if you made it this far, thank you for staying strong. And the very last thing that I wanna show is Screen Studio, which I'm actually using right now. And it makes screen recording so simple and has some niceties like zoom animations and automatic cursors, which can make screen recording viewing experience a little bit more engaging. And I really like this auto transcribe feature as well. This is what the controls look like and you can record your whole display, your window, you know. So if you found at least one of these helpful, be sure to leave a like down below or let me know down in the comments if you have any recommendations for me to check out. And as always, see you on the next video.